Hey, all right. Good evening. All right, cool. We've got people showing up. We're going to take just a couple minutes and let people get on stream. Hope everybody's had a good week. Yeah, we're starting to get a little bit more people in. Can y'all hear me okay? I got everything adjusted a little bit better, I hope, from last time. All right, cool. We're getting a good little bit of people starting to come in. Hope everybody's had a good week. Um, it's Sunday night, and uh, I thought that we would get together and uh, you know talk about some more things before our next class, which we're going to be on uh, this coming Thursday. But uh, now, what we're going to be talking about tonight, we're going to title this uh, "Dread Bookshelf Essentials." Um, Everybody, you know, goes to the thing of they look for information online and, you know, they go to these different things and stuff. But, you know, one of the best places outside of just living it and doing it is uh, that there are a lot of, of books out there that have been written over the years by many, many people uh, uh, that pertain to juridic practice, juridic uh, uh, psychic ability uh, workings and different kinds of things. And so tonight what we're going to be talking about is some of the good, some of the bad, and some of the, eh, you know, it's, it's, it's stuff that's going to be there that you'll just have to make a judgment call. But, uh, hello, Cody. Good to see you here. Um, so, yeah, everybody's always asking me, can I put up a list? Well, we are going to put up a list. I'm going to uh, make a PDF and put a whole bunch of titles of, of books and the authors and stuff like that. But for tonight we're just going to go through some of the ones that I personally own and also some of the ones that I recommend for people that are starting out in Druidry and uh, Irish Pagan uh, traditions and stuff like that and uh, also I'll let you know right up front that a lot of the books here I didn't personally purchase these are books that were given to me as review copies whenever I worked was a uh, uh, reviewer for Redwell Wiser I was sent, but hey, thanks for the thumbs up. I was sent copies of various books from uh, Red Wheel. Whoa, all right, getting all kinds of loves there. Had a couple of angers. I don't know why people were angry, but okay. Uh, but uh, so there was a period where I, I was a uh, reviewer and stuff for Red Wheel Wiser. So some of those books were given to me, but every book that I have, I've read in some form. Some of them I haven't completely finished. And there are many of them here that I definitely uh, recommend anybody go out and get. And then once we get den done with this uh, discussion tonight, I'll take and uh, transfer it to uh, MP4 and put it on my YouTube uh, channel. It is a Pagan Perspective on YouTube, and I encourage, encourage you to go check that out. We've got videos on topics from way back. I think I started the channel in 2013. So it's been up for a few years, so there's some stuff there that you can find, but we'll put this up as a place that you can go back and check and see, oh, was that the book he was talking about? And most of the books that uh, that are uh, that I'm going to talk about are either ones that you can find possibly already at your local cult bookstore or uh, some of the better known, Barnes & Noble and things like that. Uh, a lot of them are available at Amazon. And stuff like that and then there may be one one or two uh, that I talk about that might be like utterly out of print and they're hard to find so uh, those there are a few that are kind of like the Holy Grail for Druid books and we'll talk about those but before we do that I'm gonna take a drink tonight we're not drinking any Seagram's got to kind of go slow on the liquor until we figure out what we're gonna get out of the house so we're gonna drink a little milk it does the body good
and I want to say hello. We've got almost 50 people here already. It's good to have everybody here tonight. I hope everybody's healthy and, and doing as good as you can during this. All right, and also these books are in no particular order, and we'll go through everything here, and then what we'll do is at the end we'll talk about some of the books that I don't that I uh, don't show you tonight, and then at the very end we'll go through the stuff that I deem as utter crap that I wouldn't touch with a ten foot pole, and luckily for that there's only a couple, uh, just a, a very small number that I think are just detrimental for anybody that wants to get into the direct practices to actually um, <coughs> excuse me to actually get into and start reading um, also another thing is everything that I show you it's like with every book it's like up to you to decide you know whether it fits what you want for your practice but that's the thing you know it was even with witchcraft and other traditions there's all kinds of books that are great and then there's all kinds of books that really do suck and when a book sucks you know you can tell within the first chapter uh, you know what the mindset and mind space that the author's in, and uh, and so pretty much every book that I have here next to me is something that I recommend that people check out and put in their library. And one thing I noticed that as druids we tend to be very studyish. We want to study everything. So what we'll do is later on, not we're not just going to do this series of druid bookshelf essentials, but we're going to do stuff that deal with topics such as uh, Druid Bookshelf Essentials for lore, uh, for bardic work, for uh, herbalism, and all these different things that kind of break it down into those niche sections so that you guys can have a little bit more concentrated uh, stuff that you can look for uh, online and around town at your various bookstores and stuff. All right, we've got 66 people here. Good to see you guys tonight. So I'm going to put the books up here. I'm going to hold them up so that you guys can get a view of them and see what they look like and that way you'll know uh, what you are uh, looking for first two books are by the same author and they were written by a man that I was lucky enough to interview on my show the Pagan Perspectives and he is a uh, member of Henri Fain ADF his name was Kasur Sarath and the first two books that I recommend are his book A Pagan Ritual Prayer Book, which is exactly what it is. It's got uh, prayers for every kind of ritual, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, monthly rituals with new moon, full moon, um, Samhain, the whole nine yards, for life events, uh, changes of, you know, season, all kinds of things. This is a very important little book to have, and you can get this. You can order this online, or you can pretty much get it at just about any good reputable pagan bookstore and another thing any of these books that um, I show up that if you can't find them don't be afraid to go to your local pagan bookstore and to get them to order it for you they would love to do that so there's that book and then the next one was the first one that I did the interview with him about and this is Kasur Sarah's A Book of Pagan Prayer bring this back so there's not so much light on it and this is prayers for morning, noon, night, prayers to the gods, prayers for all kinds of things. And let me just pick one out here. Let's see here if I can find a small one. The eagle ends his flight and goes to his well-earned sleep in his western airy. So will I go to mine when the time is right, that I might rise again tomorrow and take flight with him. Hail to you, sun setting in the west. As you close your day, you end your long journey. As for me, I will too soon begin my time of rest. But first, I will one more time face you as you sit on the horizon, and once more raise my hands in praise. And this book is filled with just wonderful stuff. Um, and this is published by, I think this, yes, this is uh, Red Wheel Wiser. So you can go on their website, and I'm pretty sure that you can order that uh, straight away. That and the other book are both by Redwell Weiser. Um, recap one of the books that I um, talked about the last time that we did class. Uh, this is one of the first books that I really read that kind of tied me into, um, uh, you know, what 
Druidry was and how the lore and things kind of came together and the way that ritual was important. And this is uh, the Apple Branch by Alexi Kondrivio. And it says, unique and valuable for those who would awaken the Celtic soul by Diana Paxson. That's her review of this. And this is what it looks like. And uh, let me move my fingers here so you guys can see that a little bit better. Very cool book. And this is an older book. This has been around for many years. But I think it's a capstone. It's very, it's, uh, it's not just to say that it's very important, but it's something that you can use to uh, put kind of a, uh, uh, a foundation for your uh, druid practices, uh, whether it's uh, invocations, uh, setting up devotional times, setting up shrines to the gods in your home and on your property, uh, a little bit of the history and things like that. So that right there is a very uh, relevant book to things. Uh, something that another book that I like that is pretty decent um, and this is one that I was given as a review copy from Wiser this is the Apple Tree book of Celtic verse and the reason why I like this is because uh, that uh, you know there's all those of us that are on to the bardic side of life that we appreciate songs uh, poems music stories and anything that gives us a connection to the poetic side of how people live <clears throat> and stuff. So this book is also definitely one that's very good to have in your library. Um, another one that I consider a, uh, like whenever you go to it, as you're a doctor and you go to medical school, you have those journals that you have to read. And there's the ones that are, you know, mostly for your specialty and that you wouldn't leave home without it. It's the thing that you base your practice on. Well, for me, this is one of them. This is the Encyclopedia of Celtic Wisdom by John and Caitlin Matthews. And this book, it's like, I'm not finished reading it, not by a long shot. I may be two-thirds or just a little over half coming up on two-thirds. And there are uh, uh, things that deal with spiritual concepts, ritual things, uh, just a whole bunch of different stuff here that uh, I recommend anybody get this. And this book, believe it or not, you can find it on Amazon right now. Uh, fairly cheap. I've seen it as high as like 30 bucks. Don't get it for that. But I've also seen hardbacks for as low as $7.99. And then you figure shipping, that's, that's not... That's not overly bad. Um, let me get the next one here. I want to say hello to everybody. Thank you guys for coming and hanging out. Holy cow! We're here at uh, 110 people that are on the on the stream here, and we're getting. If you have any questions or if you want to leave any comments, feel free. I like to know what you think about what we're doing here. And just before we get too much further in this. Uh, I want to take a minute and kind of get the energy set for this. So we just want to take a minute and kind of get the universe going here. So what we're going to do is we're going to close our eyes and take a deep breath. Oh. Oh. May the blessings of mind, body, and spirit be yours. And thank you guys for hanging out with me tonight as we talk about Druid Bookshelf Essentials. Books that everybody asks about, asks others that, you know, what what do you read? How did you learn uh, some of the things to do outside of, uh, you know, the groves and stuff that you've worked with? What are the things that you read that uh, help you move along and advance in your path? And another book that I highly recommend it's Old Ways and Old Secrets, Pagan Ireland, From Ancient Myth to Modern, Modern Tradition by Joe Kerrigan. Uh, 
And this kind of takes it into uh, the Irish side of things, uh, the different myths and areas uh, in Ireland that are uh, very important to pagan tradition. And this book is, I've just started reading it recently. Um, that's another thing. I'm one of those people, uh, I don't know th that uh, about you, but I read many books at once. Like I'll start one and I'll read another and I'll read another and I'll read another. So I'll have books that have bookmarks uh, all over the place, all over the house. And I'll read little bits and, and, and chunks here and there. But I'm one of those people that can, uh, you know, uh, you know, keep it up in here, you know, pretty much. I have good cognizance of what I'm reading, but I love it. That's what I do. And uh, hello, MJ. Looks like your replies are working. Good to have you aboard. Um, and some of these books have been given to me by friends and such and things like that. So that's another thing. Um, another set of books that I like is the Elements of uh, a Tradition series. And these were put out by, I believe, Element Publishing. And uh, I don't know if any of you know any of the uh, Druid traditions in the, in the United States and around the world, but one of them is Obod, which is the Order of Bards, Obates, and Druids in England. And their chosen chief is uh, Philip Cargom, and he's a writer, author, uh, poet, leader of the of the uh, tradition right now. And this is a book that I highly recommend. This is The Elements of the Druid Tradition by Philip Cargom. And this book, you can get it online. I've seen it as low as a dollar on Amazon. So you figure shipping a couple bucks. So for under $5, you're going to get a good little introduction to, now this isn't necessarily uh, full-on pagan, but there's enough things to, that uh, kind of give you some ideas of what uh, different traditions of uh, druid groups around the world are into. And uh, one thing I will say as we go through these is I will tell you if they delineate more towards the pagan side of things or if they delineate more towards the uh, ceremonial magic, um, philosophical side of, of, of uh, Druidry where they're not focused so much on the uh, pagan side of things. And speaking of that, the other book that we have, that was Philip Cargom. A minute ago, we just did the uh, book Celtic Wisdom. Well, this is The Elements of the Celtic Tradition, written by Caitlin Matthews. And I love this little book. This is very, she has a very prolific writing style, and she can make you think with the way that she phrases things and, uh, you know, puts it out there. And this is an older book. But even though it is older, it still has a lot of information that anybody that's new uh, in the tradition, whether it's, you know, uh, working towards the Druid path or the Bard or uh, Seer, these, all of these books have a little bit of something for everybody. There's going to be parts and pieces that resonate with everybody's mind. We're going to see if we can get that to focus in a little bit better. Let's see if we can put it over here. All right, well, all right, there we go. All right. Next, we move into a book that has been written by one of the uh, prolific uh, founders of a more ceremonial, uh, but still very nature-focused uh, tradition of Druidry here in the United States called the AODA which is the Ancient Order of Druids in America, and this was set up uh, several years ago, actually a good lot of years ago, by the author John Michael Greer. And this is uh, the Druid Magic Handbook, Ritual Magic Rooted in the Living Earth. And this is relatively new. This is a book that I was given as a review copy uh, by Ray Will Weiser. Matter of fact, I did a show on, well, I put this in one of my shows. And this is very fascinating. There is a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that even as a pagan within these pages that are, that resonate magically for what we can do. So, um, and I do believe you can order this directly from Wiser. And also it is definitely, you can, you can find this 
on Amazon. Uh, surprisingly, I've been to our local Barnes and Noble, and as far as having it in store, I didn't find it. At our local Pagan store, they don't have it in store, but you can order it. So this is one of those that is pretty easily findable, but it does have a lot of use for us, uh, even as those that follow the Pagan traditions for Druidry. Now we come to one of my favorite authors. And her name is Emma Restall Orr. And Emma Restall Orr, uh, many years ago with her friend and uh, companion through her training as a druidess, uh, started to work with the BDO, which is the group started by Philip Shalcrass in Britain called the British Druid Order. And she has many, many, many books that she's written. Uh, she's on Facebook video. Matter of fact, if you go into the Missouri Druid School page and scroll for like 15 minutes, you'll get down to some videos that I posted of rituals that she did uh, with the BDO on YouTube. And they're just, oh my God, they're beautiful. I love her. She has a beautiful spirit. Um, she's very smart, uh, knows her stuff, and as a priestess, she is just incredible. And this book is called Druid Priestess, An Intimate Journey Through the Pagan Year with Emma Restall Orr. And this, I believe, I actually found at our local pagan bookstore, Renaissance. So this one is still acquirable at some point or another. And this, is, this book kind of gears towards more... Uh, those that are looking to teach, you know, to find themselves uh, where they are within direct tradition. Because there's sometimes, you know, you're, you're wanting to do something, but you don't know where to start. You don't know what to think about it. Well, she speaks in a way that kind of helps you figure some of that out. So this is a very good book for men and women to start to learn about where they can go and where they can start their journey in Druid practice. <clears throat> and we've got, oh my goodness, 179 people. Good to have you guys here tonight. And we've got more stuff coming up through the week, so I appreciate you, you uh, hanging out with me tonight. Give me just a second here. Now we look at something that is a little bit more of a historical book. Uh, but still, it's very important. It, it kind of uh, uh, sets the stage for everything that we know now um, and gives us a, a glimpse of, uh, you know, who the Druids were from ancient times and how it kind of brings it up into modern society. And one of my favorites, and I've had this book for years actually, is The Druids, Celtic Priest of Nature by Jean Markley. See if I can get this over here. There we go. We're gonna take this over just a hair. See if that'll take some of the glare off. I'm a trying. There we go. All right, that kind of gives you a bird's eye view, at least of what the cover looks like. And when was this published? I think this is one that was one late late 80s, maybe. Give me just a second to see what the publishing date is. I, okay, this is a sec. This was originally printed in 1983, but then it was reprinted in 1999. Okay, so it's still relatively new, and this book is still findable in various bookstores and <coughs> excuse me, other locations around the country. Now, one of the classes that we're going to get into uh, here pretty soon is uh, we're going to get into the divination side of Ogham. And I was, it was my pleasure um, to have on my show Mickey Mueller. Uh, she is an author, she is an artist, and she is the creator of The Voice of the Trees and Ogham Oracle. And she came on my show and we had a wonderful, just killer interview. And I loved her to bits. And she sent me a box set of the uh, Ogham Oracle. And this is what it is. Voice of the Trees. This is a Llewellyn product and it has been out for just a few years now, probably about nine, about nine years. So it's been out for a little bit. 
But for someone that hasn't risked their own set of Ogum, the cards are beautiful, which we're going to, we're probably going to do, we're going to use them as an example of what they look like. So once we do do our class or yeah, our class on Ogum itself, that this will be one of the things that we use uh, to kind of get you guys set up in that. But this this set you can purchase at, purchase it just about anywhere. You can get it online. You can get it at uh, here in Springfield. You can get it at our uh, uh, Renaissance. They if they don't have it in stock, they can order it from from her publishing arm. And it usually takes about two or three days to get down here even. But uh, this is a very cool book, and it I think the set is only like nineteen ninety five, so it's very reasonable. It's the the book. The runes, and if you get the deluxe, I think it's a little bit more. It comes in her a, her own handcrafted silk bag that they come in. Okay, we're going to move this book off to the side because it's one of the ones that I'm not too big on to. And, of course, everybody needs some of the incidental books that kind of can help round out your library. And, holy crap, we got 200 and... 200 people. Thank you guys for coming in here, hanging out. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a love. Let me know that you're being able to hear me okay. Uh, I might be getting a new microphone here pretty soon to kind of help you guys along. But this next book is by Lady Wild, illustrated by, Mar by Marlene Ekman. And this is Irish Cures, Mystic Charms, and Superstitions. This is another background, back backbone of pagan tradition is the superstitions charms and how the the cures were done uh in you know the various parts of ireland and stuff like this so this is your own little like cookbook the uh, maybe a, a, a spell book grimoire whatever of what you can glean for yourself to learn about the irish traditions when it came to charms and superstitions hello jason hello uh, so this one's pretty not maybe maybe not that easy to find, but it is out there. Okay. All right. Next, the next book that we're going to talk about is not necessarily uh, tied into uh, the Irish side of Druidry, but this is probably one of the most important books for bards when it comes to uh, learning about how to. Uh, you know, work in that vein of how do I find inspiration for my poetry, for my music, uh, for all these different things that make bards bards. And I think one of the biggest is Penguin Classics presents the Mabinogian. I think everybody should have a copy of this. It's incredible. I haven't finished it yet. I'm halfway through. Most of the books that I have here, I'm halfway through. And even though this is mostly Welsh stories and things like that, uh, it's it's just tied so much with the lore, and there's a lot of uh, even though Ireland is its own island, and then you move over to the British side of things, they are there are stories that have kernels of truth that tie them together from one isle to the next. So even though this is mostly Welsh, then you know there are still things within the book that kind of tie to the Irish side of things, and this was like cheap. It was like. Six ninety nine. So yeah, six dollars and ninety nine cents, and this can be bought just anywhere. And maybe if you don't get the Penguin Classic ones, get any good version. The Ford version of the Mad Menogian, uh is all good. So we've got this uh, as a definite staple that you want to have if you can get it onto your bookshelf. All right. Um. One thing about druids is we tend to be very tied to the earth. We are ecologically minded. We are protective of the environment. And I think that's one thing that's good about now is that many druids and pagans uh, and, and people in general are seeing that the earth is dying and that we need to take care of it. Because if we take care of the earth, then it will take care of us for many, many generations. Um, oh, awesome. Um, so, you know, that's one thing. It's like we tend to gravitate towards the ritualistic side of things and, you know, what it is the actual hands-on how to do a druidry. But whenever you're looking outside of that grove of trees, 
you have to look at the rest of the world that's around you. And this next book is another book by John Michael Greer, which I was given as a review copy called Mystery Teachings from the Living Earth, An Introduction to Spiritual Ecology by John Michael Greer. And this book is amazing. Um, I've read like maybe half of it. And let's just give one of the things on the back. It says, a mastery analysis and description of what genuine mystery schools and magical traditions are all about by one who is a, 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 obviously as wise as he is well experienced uh, per, per, pertaining to ancient te teachings in a form equal to the challenges of the natural world today. So magical tradition can be eco ecologically motivated. It's not just about, you know, summoning the fairies to the forest. It's what you do after you've summoned the fairies to the forest. How do you take care of the forest that the fairies are living in? That whole kind of uh, dichotomy of of helping each other, letting the human side of the human side of things be a beneficial part of the spiritual and magical side of the world because we both work together in those aspects. Next book, then we're going to get to probably the most important book that I have of every. But another one is a lot of people ask about the gods and goddesses and things like that. And there have been <clears throat> many different books written about individual different gods and goddesses. Um, and one that I was given by uh, Red Wheel for a review copy is Rediscovering the Moon Goddess, Queen of the Night by Sharon McLeod Nikmaka. And this is about... One of the coolest books ever written on the moon goddess that I've ever had uh, the chance to read. I haven't, fin I haven't finished it. Like I say, every book I own, pretty much except for one or two, I haven't finished. Because I don't want to. Sometimes I want to finish a book all the way through. But I'm one of those people that I can't. Because then it's like you're sad at the end. It's over with. It's like that's the way it was with some of the Harry Potter books that I read when I was younger. So it's like, you know. I try to drag it out as long as I can because then you get more enjoyment out of it. And on the back here it says, uh, so often we find books that are either uh, rigorously academic and dry as hell or intuitive and popular and willfully inattentive to fact. Sharon's work continues the best of each approach, delivering meticulous research from the best writers while remembering that her intelligent, non-specialist uh, reader wishes but only to know uh, and and to understand. And that's the one thing. It's like some of these books are a little bit wordy. Some of them are a little bit, uh, you know, out there that, uh, you know, you almost have to have a PhD to read them. And her books, which there's a couple others that I'd like to get, but I haven't. Um, I'll have to go through Red Wheel and see about getting them. But this is a good start for anybody that has... Uh, a women's mysteries bent that wants to think about the goddess and how that pertains to their life. Well, this one right here, wish I could hold this a different way. There we go. And that's a definitely good good place to start. All right, I'm gonna take a drink. And holy cow, we're at 275 viewers. Awesome! Thank you guys for coming tonight. Grab yourself a drink, light a candle, and sit back. If you have any questions about any of the books, get that off of me. If you have any questions about the books, go ahead and put them up here on the screen, and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I think one of the most important books that I've had ever since that I started out as a pagan, and there's a couple people here. Mary Jo, which is uh, watching the stream now, has known me for basically since day one. And that's been over 27, 28 years now. Um, there are books that I've had from way back there whenever I was just for, you know, first started learning. You know, whenever you very, very first start learning about pagan traditions, you're pretty much a Llewellyn witch. You just buy everything that you can get from Llewellyn and maybe just a couple other sprinkling of some other books here and there. But then, you know, once you get past that phase, you start to learn about the people that are actually out there doing it, that are working in the pagan community, whether it's through ADF or Covenant of the Goddess 
or you know, uh, Fellowship of ISIS, or any of these other large umbrella organizations that are kind of you know keeping everything going for hundreds of thousands of pagans even today. Um, there is always that one seminal work that kind of goes to the people, goes to the traditions, and finds out who they are, how they came into being, and why they are still doing what they're doing. And one of the best books ever about that, it was written by the uh, uh, Order of the White Oaks, Ellen Everett Hopman, which I was lucky to interview her on my show as well. And uh, she wrote this book here, People of the Earth. The New Pagans Speak Out, and this, she interviews people from British Traditional Wicca, um, Druidry, uh, Golden Dawn, uh, so many different traditions, and she goes in and finds out, you know, some of the things about how they came into existence, uh, the areas of the, of the world that they have studied and worked and things like this, so this here is like, if I have a top five books that I would recommend for your uh, bookshelf, this is definitely within the top three. Uh, Pe New People of the Earth, The New Pagan Speak Out by Ellen Everett Hopman is definitely on the list. All right. A lot of people are very analytical when it comes to magic. <clears throat> And I think one of the earliest books that kind of tried to show how magic can be considered real in variances, because everybody thinks, you know, magic is something that is, you know, fairy stars and fire and bolts of stuff coming out of our fingers and all that stuff. Well, to a degree, that's something that should be able to happen. And there have been people that have taken the time to kind of study the analytical side of what magic could be. And one of those was uh, Isaac Bonowitz. And his primarily book is uh, is uh, this one right here, the very first edition actually of Real Magic by Isaac Bonowitz. And this is another one. This one I'm about three quarters of the way through. It's very fascinating. Um, another thing is that I recommend there is a video of Isaac on YouTube where he did an interview with. Uh, uh, the host of Tomorrow with Donald Michael Craig and there was somebody else that he had with him where they kind of talk about how uh, he came into writing uh, Real Magic and for those that like a deeper understanding of the, the workings of what magic is and what it can be that right there is one of the books that I recommend to somebody that's looking to go a little bit deeper and of course you got to have a foundation of the background of the gods and the traditions of your the island, you know, with Ireland itself. And so I think there's nothing that that fits the bill uh, better than uh, even something as simple as the Ch Children's Library Book of Myths and Mythology. And this thing is huge. And it's got a lot in it. There is just this. I'll just put this up for a second because we'll move on to the next book. But this is by uh, uh, retold by Anthony Horowitz. And there is so much story and tales and things about the different myths and mythologies. Not just about gods, but myths about heroes and places and events and just so many different things. And this one is kind of hard to find. This one you'll have to go on and see if you can find on possibly uh, Amazon. All right. This next one's kind of new. It's been out for just a, just a few years, uh, probably about seven or eight. There's other books that have been around a little bit longer, but this one kind of gives uh, a more generalized view because it's, it's sections written by various members of the jury community uh, various leaders of the Druid traditions, and this is The Rebirth of Druidry, Ancient Earth Wisdom for Today, written by Philip Cargom and about 10 or 15 others, including Isaac Bonowitz, uh, John Michael Greer, um, Tony Taylor from the Hendra Keltria, some other people, and this book should be pretty well easily accessible out there at some place. Um, it should be 
yeah, this is twelve dollars, which is not bad. It's about three hundred pages, and there is a lot of information here. There's a lot of information on uh, the Druid calendar, uh, the, the the times of the year, celebrations that we have, a little bit about magic, a little bit about uh, how the practices of certain things came to be, and and why Druids do what we do. So this is definitely one that is a good start for anybody that's new on the path that wants to find out what we're about, what we do, and so this would be one of the first ones that I recommend. All right, another one that's kind of in the vein, and this is not necessarily directed towards uh, being druid druidic, but also it's just one of those that is, I think, uh, uh, an important book to have because it talks about many different traditions and it talks about how the pagan movements of the 60s and 70s and even some of the things that were happening in paganism in the earlier years before the 1900s I think this is one of the most seminal and just a little bit of trivia thank you for that love appreciate it that little bit of trivia about this book is it came out the same day as Starhawk's uh, um, what was the big one that Starhawk wrote? Not Dreaming in the Dark. Not the White Swans. But the, the first book, oh, The Spiral Dance. This and The Spiral Dance came out on Samhain in 1980. And of course we're talking about drawing down the moon. Witches, druids, goddess worshippers, and other pagans in America today. Written by the late Margot Adler. And yes, this is one of the best books out there. Um, to just, uh, yeah, Spiral Dance, MJ, yeah, this, this and Spiral Dance came out on Samhain in 1980, both the same day, um, and this is just chock full. As a matter of fact, uh, if, if MJ has a copy of this, and if, if it's, th if I think if it's this printing, if you look at the very back, uh, in, uh, the, uh, Index or whatever the the forwards or I don't know what they call it where it tells you about some of the groups that they helped kind of put this together. Uh, on page three hundred four, there was a uh, insert uh, of about a, a paragraph or two put in by Pat. So Greenleaf is in this is actually in this book. So and that's the coven that I was initiated in two years ago. But this is a must have. This I mean if you can find a copy. Uh, definitely get it because it has so much information that can kind of give you an idea of why pagans are the way that we are here in the United States because we're so diverse and that's what makes it great that's why somebody says well why aren't you a Christian Christians are the same thing they have all their denominations yeah but the thing about it is it's like I think pagans are more accepting of each other on a lot of things than that situation and it's like I don't feel separated just because there's a different word that's above my head compared to somebody else. If you practice voodoo and I'm over here and I'm a druid, I still love you just as much as I would somebody over here that was, you know, a practicing heathen or whatever. You know, so it's like I think there's that that bond between pagans regardless of the tradition. So this right here, drawing down the moon. Uh, also, I did a Pagan Bookshelf Essentials on my blog, A Pagan Perspectives, uh, which is in the Missouri Druid School. If you scroll way down, somewhere in there, I put the link to it, and, and there's a little bit more, more that I have written uh, about this. So if you guys want to look into that, you can find that as well. All right, we're almost getting down to the end and then we'll talk about some of the some of the books that I wasn't able to show then we'll talk about some of the books that I wouldn't put on my worst enemy all right another one that I find to be one of the most uh, influential as far as for Druid leaders that have uh, started and, and foundation groups here in, in the United States whether it is the Red Branch Druids or AODA or some of the OBOD and things like that and even ADF and beyond. Uh, one of the books that is kind of a capstone for that also is for anybody that has worked in leadership within uh, 
a, a, a Druid organization in that vein is that we, we tend to want to look at where, uh, you know, what what some of the things what they that they did, you know, how it was all intertwined together in a Celtic vein, the Irish vein. Also, while I'm thinking about it here, and probably the next few weeks, we're going to be doing a uh, class on Irish Druidry and the Celtic language. Is Irish Gaelic an important part of Druid tradition? And I believe it is, and we'll be talking about that in class. But this book is one of the um, uh, more important books, and this is called Celtic Heritage, an uh, Ancient Tradition in Ireland and Wales, written by Alwyn and Brinley Reese. This is in my top five. This can be found pretty much just about anywhere uh, on Amazon and so forth. But this is a deep read. You kind of have to have your thinking cap on whenever you read this. But whenever you do, it's it's not necessarily life changing. But whenever you start to write ritual, whenever you start to work magic, whenever you start to do the things that you do for the gods, this can kind of help shape your thought processes. Um, it helps in the bardic aspects because you get a little bit more um, understanding. And the one thing that I'm noticing about all of these books that we've gone through so far, that anything that has any ties to Celtic tradition and Ireland and some of these other things, um, <clears throat> a lot of them uh, complement each other and don't are not so diverse that you could actually say that they that they they that they push each other away. Uh, there are things that are you know they bring the information together because that's the one thing is like the, you know uh, a lot of Druid tradition wasn't written down except for what was brought across from uh, the ancient Romans and things like that that had like I said in the last class that had tried to take over Ireland but they couldn't get the job done and so whenever you're getting a second-hand account from somebody that doesn't necessarily know they're only going through what they saw from just a, a very short amount of time they didn't get the chance to examine and really look at the culture and see what was really going on. So a lot of the stuff, the, the accounts that we've gotten from Rome and specifically the Catholic Church and some of these other things is very fanciful and some of it is, you know, not very flattering to us because, you know, uh, anything that was pagan before, anything that was pagan whenever the Catholic Church came around was something that they kind of wanted to, uh, you know, uh, look down on and make less of than what it was. But that's why books like this is what kind of lets us latch on to not necessarily to the truth but to the truth as what we can ascertain from uh, you know sifting through all the BS that was out there you know that came out from the Catholics and things like that uh, you know that kind of watered it down well a lot of these books here some of these books do have a little bit of fluff the fluff level some of them are fluffy, but not so overly fluffy that they become, you know, just a headache. Uh, most of these books are, you know, the, 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 the sources that the authors come through with are, you know, searchable and things like that. So it's like these are the things that in these, some of these books, they're not trying to steer you wrong. They're not trying to throw you off any kind of, of trail to the truth because, like, I, I'm, I'm a believer that truth is subjective, that we find it ourselves. And it's, uh, you know, to a degree it can be universal, but my truth is not your truth, and your truth isn't your truth until you find it. And so that's why we read, that's why we learn, we see what others have seen, and then we take, we read, and we go, okay, this registers, this is what I'll work with. Then you got the other side that goes, that's bullshit, I'll throw that off to the side and never touch it again. Which we're going to get to some of that here in just a little bit. But for right now... These are some of the places to start, you know, um, after this. Also, there's going to be uh, books within these that are recommended by others. Go through and check that out because then you start to build up the kind of library that you want and are able to work with. And once you get into that vein, um, your practice will grow. Your ability to understand Druidry for what it is and the Irish uh, Irish traditions uh it, it grows and it gets better and it gets stronger because I've got some of these people I'm afraid to try you know to get into Druidry. Wicca seems a lot easier. Uh, I don't 
I mean, I don't really see any spiritual tra tradition being easy. It's not like you're putting together a model or anything like that. It's, this is your spirituality. This is how you connect to the world and to the gods and everything else. So it's not a matter of easy. It's just what you're willing to put into your practice. And there are some times that, you know, Wicca does seem easier because there's not a whole lot more study than just a little bit. But with this, I mean, you get what you put in. You get what you put into anything, Wicca or otherwise. But with this, if you want to go that extra distance and go a little bit deeper, these books, some of these, uh, for anybody, is a good place to start. Holy Krakatoa, we're at 415 viewers. I love you all. You people are wonderful, and I'm so glad. And share this with your friends. Once we get done, I'm going to let it set. I've got to let it go for like a half an hour. And then I will convert it to MP3, and then we will put it up on uh, my YouTube channel, which is A Pagan Perspective on YouTube. So feel free to go there and subscribe to the channel, and you'll find this. You'll find last week's class, uh, our Druid Meditation for Health and Healing, and some other stuff. So this, And we're going to be doing class next week, which we'll talk about here in just a few minutes. But the next book that we're going to get into, and this is beautiful. This one might be kind of hard to find. Uh, this is The Celtic Book of Living and Dying, an, an Illustrated Guide to Celtic Wisdom by Juliet Wood. This is beautiful. If I can get the dang, there we go. We're going to see if we can get the... There we go. That's about as much of a glare as I can get off of it because of the computer monitor. But it's just beautiful. It has so many color pictures and stuff in it. Some of the 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 uh, uh, the kills and things. Uh, voyages between realms, the other world. Once we get into our next class, we might do some referencing from this. Uh, Dark nights of the tomb. Uh, what happens after you die? Um, talismans of power for death. Uh, Merlin's horde. Just all kinds of things. And this this book is beautiful. I don't know how rare this is, but I'm thinking it might be a little bit hard to find unless you just look out and find a copy of it for like five or ten bucks on Amazon. But uh, let me get my fingers off of there. Wish I could get that glare off, but yeah, this is beautiful. I love it. All right. Okay, the next book. This is one of the first ones I bought for myself years ago. And this was uh, written by one of my favorite. I'm, I'm also a big into male mysteries. Um, I love the idea of... You know, there are groups that work within the Dianic realm. Well, over the years, uh, we've started to move into what it is to being a man, how men fit into the the universal system of, you know, the duality of male and female and where the gods fit into uh, masculinity and some of these different things. And one of the authors that writes in that realm is a man by the name of Nicholas R. Mann. That's M-A-N-N. -N. He's also a druid. And one of the first books that I ever got from him was this book by Maya McGee Sutton and Nicholas Mann. This is Druid Magic. Some of you guys may have this. Very shiny cover. I love it. And this is very hands-on. Lots of correspondences, uh, rituals. Uh, honoring Druid ceremonies in your backyard. Um, let's see, here's another. Uh, from the past to present. Uh, what is a Druid? Um, uh, what is Druidry? These are different chapters. Um, different reading sources. Um, it's, this, is, this, is, this book contains a lot of... of uh, of information in it. This is something that you can almost, and it's another thing, matter of fact, while I'm thinking about it, uh, yeah, it is actually. Um, for any time that you do start any type of study, I recommend that you go to Walmart or you go to Staples or you go to some place where you can get one of those uh, thick 
bound, uh, wire bound with these aligned or blank pages. Uh, if you don't already have a grimoire or a book of shadows or, or whatever, start that. But just for your own individual thing that isn't necessarily a more sacred book, but something that you can write in more frequently, is get you one of those spiral bound books with the paper. And any of the books that you're reading, take notes, uh, ask, you know, write down questions, um, write correspondences, page numbers. Uh, suggestions for other books and then if you think somebody that's a friend or somebody in a, a, a Grove or an organization that you personally know might have some information feel free to write that stuff down because then what you're doing is you're setting up a loop to where you can come back and hone in a little bit more for the information that you want to work with and then over the years which I have a book like that in my bedroom. Actually, I have several. They're little hardbound books that are put in my bookcase. Um, and I've written in them, and I've asked questions, and I've done correspondences, and I've written poetry, and I've done all these other things. And it's it's good. It's kind of a reflection. It's kind of like a magical diary without actually doing the magic. It, it becomes magic on its own because it's all of your thoughts and your energy going into that. But even in you know something like studying Druidry, it's good to have so everybody beginner or old pro I recommend that you have a book set aside where you can write down your thoughts ideas and things about the stuff that you read in, in any of these almost done we just got about four or five left all right Excuse me. This this one I love because it's more focused on all of the, the you know a, uh, a completeness of the stories, and this is Celtic Myths and Legends by Charles Squire. And this is a thick book, and there is a lot to digest here. It's it's uh, very poignant, and it goes into some of the stuff that you wouldn't normally see. In other books, there are some legends and things that you didn't know about here. Um, or if, if you did, you've really gone pretty far. And another thing, before I forget about it, what we're going to do also is I'm going to go through some of the Internet archives and things like that. And there are some of the Irish books of myth and legend that are actually written in Gaelic and some of these other things. And what I'll do is I'll go through the top 20 of those and make up a listing and we'll uh, in, uh, you know, uh, include those in an upcoming live stream to let you guys know about some of those and where to look and things like this. But this is also a, definitely a good book to have uh, on the shelf and have it at your disposal because at the very least you can use the ideas and, and, and things that are put forth in these myths and legends for ritual. When you when you want to do a certain ritual, instead of doing the same formula every time, I tend to try to uh, you know keep an outline but change things up because then it kind of makes each time that we're coming together before the gods and things like that a little bit more special. And um, I think whenever you can you can be free to experiment with expression, uh, you know, within knowledge that it makes your connection with the gods at that time whenever you are doing ritual a lot more fluid and it just for me it just seems a little bit you know just a little bit better and holy cow we're at 486 people I'm so glad you guys are here all right the next one it comes from a writer he does a little bit he's a jack of all trades and he is a teacher um, he is uh, an author and currently right now the last I knew is he's on Facebook uh, matter of fact, I'm friended with him on Facebook, and he is back to school. He's a professor, university professor, and he was at one of the major Canadian universities, uh, and I think he was a literature professor, so of course, you know, druid writing and stuff like that, but he'd be, he has been pretty busy, so I've been keeping an eye out, and I haven't seen any posts or anything from him in a long time, so I hope he's okay, but I think it's just his job. And his work has, uh, you know, just skyrocketed to where he hasn't been able to be on. But this one is another good book. And this is 
uh, by Brendan Cathbad Myers, PhD, and it's called The Mysteries of Druidry. There we go. It's got the trefoil in the middle. And um, this is a kind of a lighter book. It's, it's more, um, you're not getting a lot of information here. You, you do, but what you get is kind of uh, things that help you to think, to think like a druid, to think in terms of how you interact with the gods and how you interact with nature and stuff. It's not the how-to, it's the why. It's, you know, how it affects you mentally, um, how it can help you grow in your mind, to grow day by day with the way that you interact with people. He's very thoughtful like that. And he has talked about writing some books that are like sequels to this. So I'm kind of hoping that he does have one that comes out as the number two to this because he's left a lot of room for more information. And I'm not a writer, so it's like, but I've, I've asked him, you know, it's like, have you thought about doing another one? And he goes, yeah, I've got others that I do want to do. But for now, this one is the uh, main book that he's got out right now. And we got just a couple more here. Um, a good storybook. It's just no, no information, just a story. And this is called uh, The Voyage of Raul Duin's Arc, written by Patrick Harts. If I can get the... And it was written in, I believe, 1999. And this is for Study Line Press or Storyline Press, and this is just something that you just want to get yourself a glass, of, uh, cup of tea, and some cookies, and sit with your feet up, and just take a little bit and get carried away. It's uh, it's it's a story that I've only read like the first ten pages of it, but it looks like it's going to be pretty good. It's 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 Irish and British kind of intermix. There's some things that kind of go together with it. And um, this copy was seven bucks, so it's still pretty cheap. And if you want, sometimes you don't want to be studying all the time. Sometimes you just want to have a book that you can sit back with and read and do, you know, just, just be yourself for a little bit. So it's always good to have a book like that. And this is one right here that I highly recommend. Holy cow, we're at 520 viewers. Thank you guys so much for coming tonight. All right. We've got one more book right here. Then we got one on the floor that I'll bring up. Um, this one is the predecessor when we were talking a little while ago about Obad, the Order of Bards, Obates, and Druids. Um, we have the, uh, the uh, founder of Obad, and it, he wrote a book. Uh, just before he died and before Philip Cargon was installed as the uh, chosen chief of the order. And this is the Book of Druidry by Ross Nichols. And Ross Nichols was the original chosen chief of the order of Bards, Obates, and Druids in England. And this is where you get some of the foundational uh, stuff of where Obot came from. Um, his thought processes on what Druidry was. And this is, uh, Obod now has a lot more pagan elements than it did at the time of Ross Nichols. Um, uh, there were, in, uh, you know, there were in, uh, elements of pagan goddesses and things like that in Obod ritual before, uh, you know, Cargon was installed. But it was still more of a, a Western philosophical, uh, just this very theosophic kind of thing. So it was still in its earlier stages. And then as Cargom took over, um, it kind of evolved. And um, But every tradition has its starting place. And so for anybody that is studying with Obad, which I know that there are many uh, that are taking the courses and stuff, I'd like to take the course. Um, I hear that the courses are very, very cool. I'd like to take the uh, Bardic grade. That just, oh man. 
Uh, I do so much uh, regular druidic study that I don't really get to focus on writing and poetry and some of these other things. So I think it would be very cool to, uh, you know, get the courses from Obod and you can look into it. The only thing for me is right now with the situation that we have going on, uh, the courses are a little bit cost prohibitive. But even though they are a little bit pricey, the thing that makes them worth it is they're, they're intense, they're exhaustive, and they do, they, they are college level courses, I think. Um, I've seen examples of some of the work that people have to go through. And it's not overly easy. And it makes you think, you know, for each part of the grade study that you're doing. So I think it's to their credit that they have a robust and vital form of, you know, training for the OBOD type of druidry. So this is where it all started, right here, uh, with Ross Nichols and the, uh, uh, you know, the beginnings of the Order of the Bard and Ovates and Druids. So that right there is pretty much everything I own except for one other book, which I'm going to show you here in just a minute. And everything that I have here is, to, to, for the most part, for me, uh, a very vital and important part of, you know, Druidry out there right now. Okay. Um, then we're going to talk about the bad here in just a minute. But also, there are some books that are... Uh, out there that I haven't gotten to uh, talk about because I don't have them here to show you physical copies. But one of the main ones that I really like is a book called The Druids by Peter Beresford Ellis. And it is um, a very, uh, uh, it kind of takes you from a um, anthrop anthropological kind of look at where Druidry came from, a little bit of a uh, his his writing and his opinions and the way that he words it about the the historical aspects and some of the other things, I like it. And it's one of those books that you can get on Amazon. Uh, there's copies, there's hardback copies in the twenty dollar range, and then there are paperback copies you can get for three to five bucks. And that's another one that's in my top ten of books that uh, that you would want to start with. Another book that I like uh, uh, is um, Thorson's Principles of Druidry, which is a little bit more of a workbook type thing with a little bit more meat to it. And that was another book that was written by Emma Restall Orr. Um, also, another book that I like in the Druid genre is everybody's wanting to know, well, what herbs and stuff should I work with? Well, one good book to find out is called The Druid Sacred Herbal for the, for the Pagan Year, I believe that's the whole title, by Ellen Everett Hopman. And she's got, actually, she's got the, the, another book about uh, tree, uh, uh, tree plants, tree medicine. So actually, Ellen is big on herbal working. So there's going to be, if there's any books that you want to find on druidic herbal work, you definitely want to look into Ellen Everett Hopman. Uh, another book that I find, even though it is uh, a Llewellyn book, it was one of his best. And uh, actually, well, yeah, there's another guy that, that does the same thing. But this was before he died. It's a book called Fire in the Head by Tom Cowan. And unfortunately, Tom Cowan died here several years back. But you talk about the... the uh, Bardic inspiration when we talk about Bridget and things like that. We talk about the fire in the head. Tom Cowan wrote a book about what Druidic inspiration is. Um, and it's very, it's a beautiful book. The cover is beautiful. Um, and he goes through a lot. He takes you through a lot uh, in that vein. Um, also, there is, a, it's not specifically Druidic, but ties into a lot of Irish paganism and things like that is... Uh, Nigel Pennock's uh, Pagan Europe, which I have that somewhere in the house. That's a very important book. Um, another one that I highly recommend is um, uh, The Soliloquy of Two Sages by Aiolo Morgwag, which uh, it's a little bitty book, just so thick, just so tall, and most bookstores can order it for, from you, for you. Um, 
So there's that. Then there's others. One, another one, if you're into the Celtic Reconstructionist side of things, any of the titles that are by Aaron Laurie Rowan or any of the books that are written by uh, Stephen Blameyers are definitely um, a, uh, a good uh, thing to look for. Now we got to go to the bad, okay? And one of the worst, and there's uh, so many articles and things that are put out there, uh, but for me, it's just not something that I recommend to anybody. And the first two books are The 21 Lessons of Merlin and the next book, which is More Lessons of Merlin, written by Douglas Monroe. And the problem with The 21 Lessons of Merlin is there's nothing dramatic about it. It's sexist. It's very, very misogynistic. Um, it plagiarizes from some of Morgog's uh, writing and things like that. Um, plus, uh, for a period of time after the printing of the second book, the first book is the 21 Lessons. The next book is like more lessons. I can't think of the whole title for the second book. But at one point, Douglas Monroe vanished and left the United States and took a trip down to Mexico. And the reason why he went down to Mexico is because he was, uh, um, wasn't was paying his taxes. So he was evading the IRS. Um, and it's like I had that book at one time. A lot of droids go, well, that's the first book that I started with and everything. It's like, well, um, you know, that's great. But as far as most people that are, and it's not poo-pooing, it's a poo-poo. But if you really look at the, the writing, at the way that he's put it in there, um, and you try to tie it to anything that's uh, even close to what could be uh, uh, factual as far as the direct practices side of things, and then on some of the magical stuff that he has in there, it's just it sends up red flags, just bells and whistles, and everything goes off. So it's like you can do what you will. But that book, particularly, is a book that I would not um, look into. Another one that is, I mean, it's good reading. It's great to have around if you want to just have something to, uh, uh, you know, read through. Is a book called Witta, an Irish Pagan Tradition by Edane McCoy. A lot of her books are decent, but a lot of her books are also hit and miss. And as far as um, uh, Witta goes, Witta is a thumbs down because there are people that are in Ireland that have lived there their whole life, that have families and traditions that go back for hundreds and hundreds of years. And whenever Eden McCoy says Witta is the Irish name of Wicca for witchcraft, it's not. There's no, Witta is nothing like that. There's been people that have dis disparaged that and have, have proven it from the Irish side that that is not the case. Um, for entertainment value, it might be a book that you want to look into. There are little tidbits of things that might be good for ritual if you apply it, if you're Wiccan, to real Wiccan practice and not the idea that Wicca is the Irish word for Wicca. It's not. It's, there's, there are words that kind of pertain to that. But that connotation is not. There's nothing that ties that together. And then I've got one of the books, if I can grab it here. Now, this book isn't bad all the way through in, its, in itself, but it does have elements that kind of make me scratch my head. <clears throat> and I kind of either take it with a grain of salt or just, I'm just very, very careful. And it is the Sacred, Cal the Sacred Cauldron. Secrets of the Druids by Tag McCrossan. This little yellow book right here. And the thing about this book, there are a lot of good, there's a lot of good stuff in it, but there's like, I think, another 50% of it that to me, that there are things about ritual areas and things that don't make sense. You keep scratching your head over and over and over, and you're going, but what is he, what is he getting at here? Um... So it's like one of those books that it is something that you can keep around if you want to, but as far as you know, the validity of the entirety of the, it's of what's written, um, 
you have to know you you have to know what your believability point is, where things have to stop. And this is one of those books that the reason why I keep it is because if I reread it and if I kind of work through it in my mind, maybe some of those things now will make sense because um, now I've been in pagan practice now for almost 30 years and going up on 20 now for 20, 21 years with Enduradrine. So you get that fresh, you try to get that better perspective. So I'm thinking that maybe over time as I come back to this and look at different things that it might make more sense. So, and also another thing that I encourage while we're at this tonight, while we're talking about what we want on our bookshelves as we're learning, um, what are some of the books that you have on your shelves? Uh, put those in the comments. Let us know. Come into Missouri Druid School here on Facebook. Uh, love to have you aboard if you're out there and you're not a member. Come in and tell us what are some of the books that you have on your shelf that pertain to magic, divination, uh, just all the different aspects of, of your druidic practice. Some of the, There's going to be a lot of stuff that you have that I've never heard of, so we'd love to hear about that. Um, and like with this tonight, we're talking about Druidic Bookshelf Essentials. Um, on occasion, I will do a live stream about various topics. This is just one of them because I keep getting every day, I get messages and different things of like, what are some of the books that I need to be, uh, you know, looking into? And so this is just one part. There's going to be more later on down the line. Um, also, we've got coming up this Thursday at 7 p.m., we're going to be doing our Druid School Live uh, classes and this is going to be lesson number three. Uh, first uh, one that we did was who are the druids and then we did our second class this uh, uh, just this past week um, that kind of went into the next vein of of uh, you know dealing with the druid practice. This coming Thursday we're going to be kind of going so okay we we've looking at the, we're we're looking at what it is that we want to do um, in Jersey. We're talking about the books tonight. So you've got some of the things about, we've talked about the gods, we've talked about who the Druids were, tonight we talked about some of the books. So the next thing you go, uh, somebody asks, well as a spiritual tradition, or as a spirituality, what are some of the concepts? And there are a ton, so we're not going to be able to cover all of them, but this Lesson 3, Druid School Live, coming this Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central, we're going to be dealing with the Awen, the Otherworld, and the Ancestors, and some others that we're going to deal with that in that vein. Um, we're going to learn what the three rays are, what they represent, how they are important to Druids in general. We're going to learn about the Ancestors and how they are the focus of our worship. We're going to learn about why Druids worship trees. Um, and some of these different things and we're going to start taking and bringing that all together. We're going to start to make things more cohesive so that people are searching, that people are wanting to know what Druidry is and what it can be for them as a spiritual tradition. That next step, what are the concepts that pertain to me and why we do these things? Why do we do what we do on Samhain? Why do we do what we do at Beltane? Uh, why is the earth important? All these different things. And it's going to start to make a little bit more sense. That fog that is a lot. Because when people come into Jersey, I've got so many people that come up and ask, you know, how to get started. They look like deer with the deer caught in the headlights and like they're just in a fog and they're waiting for it to clear. Well, this is one of the ways that you kind of start clearing that fog and getting yourself in the mindset of starting your practice. And one of those things is you kind of got to start thinking about what the concepts are and how they pertain to one another. Um, even also the other world and, you know, uh, the, the, the idea of, of the... Uh, Ideas are even something something as simple and not simple at the same time as the Celtic idea of reincarnation and some of these other things. So we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be getting together for that on uh, Thursday at 7 p.m. And for uh, everybody that's here, uh, we've got uh, this situation going on with COVID-19. 
and we were going to be having a uh, wonderful celebration here in town at one of our local parks for Beltane in the Park 2020, which was going to be our fourth year in a row of just getting everybody together for potluck and ritual and just having a great time. Matter of fact, we've got 181 people on the event page who would love to come. But what we're going to do, since we're more than likely still going to be in lockdown on Saturday, the May the 2nd, so what I'm going to do is we're going to do a live stream of Beltane 2020. And we're going to do it here on Druid School. And what that's going to entail is I'm going to come together at about 6 o'clock. And we're going to sit and we're going to enjoy uh, a little bit of a online potluck where I'm just going to grab some stuff and sit here and munch and just, you know, have good conversation with some of you people out there. And then just at about twilight, we're going to uh, move the altar over and I'm going to get things together and we're going to hold a virtual Beltane uh, here on uh, the the stream and what that is going to entail is this year I've, I've done so many rituals in the past that we've done where it deals with the people and the ancestors well this one we're going to go and we're going to give a little bit more attention to the spirits of nature and by doing so this one we're going to focus on the fairy fairy is important in uh, uh, in during tradition matter of fact uh, one book that I recommend is uh, uh, The Celtic Fairy Faith in Ireland by W.E. E. Wentz. Um, that is, that's a thick book. That's about a $75 book if you find the good copy, so good luck. But that is one of uh, The Celtic Fairy Faith in Ireland, yeah, by W.E. Wentz Evans or something like that. Um, it is on, I believe it's on Amazon as well. But we're going to be doing a ritual that is pertained to Beltane and the fairy. And this theme is uh, fairies at twilight, that in between time where the veil between the world of us, the living, and the not so living entities of the fairy and the nature spirits can come and be with us at that time on Beltane. I think with the situation that we've got going on now, that it is a good idea to invite the beneficial spirits, the fae, and, and, and being such as that into our lives, into our situations, to strengthen our families, to strengthen ourselves, to give us hope and inspiration in a time that isn't very uh, conducive to any kind of happiness or whatever. But we can still do that because we're brothers and sisters in this together. And Mary Jo and other people that are uh, watching the stream have, have known for years that, you know, whenever you bring pagan people together and it really matters, we, we are, we're supportive of each other and things like that. So it's like, it's important that not only are we supportive of each other at Beltane, but we get the support that we need, not just from the gods, but from those beneficial beings and spirits that can, you know, help us get through, uh, you know, various times, and to honor them for just being a part of our lives in this world in the first place. The altar is going to be beautiful. Everything is going to be set up. So if you want to sit there at your house with a beautiful bottle of mead and a steak and have some candles lit and your kilt and your, your ceremonial robes and all that kind of stuff, that is wonderful. I would love for you to do that because that's what we're going to do. We're going to celebrate the life that we have, that we have together, and all the friends and things even though we can't be together just yet we will this is gonna this is gonna end eventually and we're gonna come out stronger for it so for, and while that's going on I'm gonna keep doing the live streams and we've got 735 people here on the stream tonight I wanna thank everybody for showing up tonight and and just letting me uh, talk your ear off while we're talking about druidic bookshelf essentials and what I'm going to do is once I get done here, I'm going to go ahead and process this. And this will go to my uh, YouTube uh, channel, A Pagan Perspective, on YouTube. And if you want to uh, uh, subscribe to the channel and watch the videos that I've got put up there, I encourage you, if you're out there and you're not a member of Missouri Druid School here on uh, Facebook, I encourage you to come on over and uh, put in a... Uh, uh, join request I'll get you in and like I say we've got this class coming up on Thursday and if you have any questions leave them in the comments if you have any questions that you don't want to put in the comments feel free to friend me send me a message 
and I'll do the best that I can. Um, and I'm thinking at some point or another, we're going to get into a little bit of a practical side of things. So what I'm going to do at maybe sometime on this next weekend, I'm going to bust out the Ogham. And for those that are interested, I might do a couple Ogham readings here live on the stream for people that would want to have their Ogham read for them and stuff. So for everybody out there, if you uh, enjoyed the stream, give me a thumbs up. Give me some loves. Let me see them go across the screen. And I want to thank Mary Jo and Jason and Cody and the other 700 plus that are here this evening. You guys are great. And I'm going to kick this off and say be safe. Don't do anything that I wouldn't do. Take care of your families. And I will see you on Thursday.